You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> YSP Frog God here. Oh boy. Chapter 1018 is a doozy. So, at the start of the chapter, we got Usopp running with Otama, keeping her safe from Kaido's forces. So, I'm really liking how this is shaping up with Usopp being the one to protect Otama. A little bit of a prediction. I think Usopp is in for a test of character soon, in the sense that he might be tempted to abandon Otama to save himself in classic Usopp fashion. I mean, there's many ways it can go, but like one of the more neat ways I'd like to see it happen would him actually abandoning Otama. I know. Then maybe a few flashbacks all the time. He's been a coward. Maybe even a little internal realization of how he'd never be a brave warrior of the sea if he would rather save himself. I mean, in general, Usopp has been lacking attention in Wano. A small little character development arc would be nice to show he hasn't been forgotten in all the action. And it'd be nice to see how close he is to becoming a true warrior of the sea, as we know that the Elbeth arc is coming soon. Following that, we have CP0 continuing to keep tabs on the fight through their go board and conversing about confirming the death of someone. And we find out later that that someone is who's who. Then we get to Jinbei versus who's who, the real meat of the chapter. While fighting Jinbei, who's who goes on a little monologue of how he's just as strong as Rob Lucci and how he lost all his status as a member of the world government cipher pole organization to protect the gum gum devil fruit from Shakes, the red haired pirate, and how his anger in turn falls onto Luffy who ate the fruit he was protecting. Following some very non-politically correct remarks from who's who towards Jinbei's fisherman heritage, which is, by the way, a really good way to get the reader to hate the antagonist and be more invested in the conflict. He speaks of a legend told throughout the prison of the sun god Nika and how in ancient times he was believed by slaves to be a legendary warrior thought to bring freedom and happiness. Now, Jinbei's cool fight aside, there's a lot to unpack here. I've been seeing a lot of conversation online about the legend of Nika, but almost none of the implications of a rogue cypherpole agent. This brings so many questions and possibilities to the story. We have someone with inside knowledge of cypherpole that is wanted dead by CP0. It begets the question, why? Why? It can be as simple as wanting to defend the honor of Impel Down and save face through the prison break, but that would make for a lame story. He has to know something that the world government doesn't want leaked. It could be possibly info on ancient weapons, Maybe some details on the Void Sentry. Maybe he even knows what that big-ass straw hat is used for. Regardless, I think this is huge. I want to make a little bit of an educated guess here and say that not only does he know about the existence of a higher sovereignty within the world government above the Five Elders, but that he, in fact, knows the identity of Imsama. I mean, the information has to leak to the main character somehow. Why not from an ex cypherpool agent? Let that marinate a bit. Oh yeah, and towards the end, while using his finger pistol, who's who breaks his index finger against Jinbei's hockey. Who's who? More like lose-lose. <laughs> Uh, I know, I know. Hey, if you like my ramblings, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll make more.